Ladies and gentlemen, this is big news. This radio has its first major hack, thanks to Temporarily Offline and his work and the Toads Discord and everybody in there. Uh, this radio is now capable of being modified, transmitted from 700, or excuse me, a 750 hertz all the way up to 55 megahertz. And you might be thinking, well, what good is that? None of that's in the handbands besides what was already unlocked. This is the key right here. It shows proof of concept that A, the firmware is hackable, and B, if things are done correctly and the limitations are within certain features internally, there might become a point where we could do two meters and maybe even 70 centimeters on this. So I'd like to take just a moment to kind of show you and explain to you what has been done. And if the firmware is not hackable completely per se, it does show us the proof of concept that changes can be made and modifications can be made to run customized software on here for the all band mod. Let's get started. Getting started, let's just talk about one or two things real quick. Temporarily offline discovered when he got this radio that he could essentially log into the SSH terminal uh, or the, the back end, the operating system of this radio and bypass the password. And while he did that, also was determined that the password was 123. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to SSH into this radio right now, or we're going to log into the back end of this radio. This isn't really a tutorial on how to actually hack your radio, but it's kind of the thought process and the steps that were taken to do it. And along the way, I'm going to explain things like uh, why this is so important for the future of development of this radio. But uh, one thing I do want to mention is with a username of root and a password of 123, Zygu left the SSH enabled by default as well as the, the web ports. And that's kind of concerning because it does leave this radio open for being hacked from the public, depending on what ports you have open on your router. Uh, so if you are going to SSH into your your uh, radio here, I would recommend immediately changing your password. But uh, let's go ahead and SSH into this here with the username and password of root. At the current time of recording, this radio is about a week old and it has two different firmwares on it. Both of them don't have Wi-Fi enabled, which means there's no network access. So those security concerns I spoke about aren't a concern right now, but in the future, if Wi-Fi gets enabled and those ports are still open, there might be a security concern there. Also with that, if you're looking to do a mod like this, uh, you're going to need to enable Wi-Fi access to SSH in to your radio. You're going to have to watch temporarily offline's video for that. And the password of 123. Let's uh, talk about a couple of things here real quick. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is, is if I go to 7.304, okay, I'm on a dummy load, by the way, and I try to key up, uh, we're green, which means I'm not transmitting. Uh, this radio is programmed to not be able to transmit out of band. That's good. Uh, but subsequently, once we got into this back end here, the first thing we would do is run PSOX, right? And that tells us a list of the processes that are running. Uh, long story short, we found this process that was located under user app QT. It was called X6100UI version 100. So I'm going to change my directory over to that that area. Okay. And when I do that, I'm prompted with a few things. First, I'll ignore this file called toads for right now. I'll explain that in a second, but I have a couple of major awesome findings. First of all, I find a database, right? And if I access that database, I get a SQLite three database that holds user, uh, user preferences, such as what frequency you left it on when you shut the radio down, what your, your power was when you shut the radio down, but those things don't update automatically only when you shut down. So changing values in here, they didn't really do anything. Even if you did try to set a value to something like, we'll call it uh, 27 megahertz, it wouldn't accept it for transmit. It would only say, like if you rebooted, oh yeah, you're on 27 megahertz, but you could only receive. Even though this database doesn't update automatically, I suspect that we can create a PHP file on a website that allows us to remotely change settings via the web. For example, if we wanted to change the frequency or the width of what you're listening to, you could change those settings and then click save. And once you save it, it will restart the database as well as the program briefly, which would then make those changes take effect. So subsequently, I started looking at this file right here, this X6100 UI file. And I used a hex editor and I determined that there's a lot of good information in there, but I didn't know where to go with it. 
Uh, well, the Toads Discord, a bunch of great people over there. A lot of people joining just for this project is alone. And uh, we had quite a few people. Uh, KD9NUD was helping out, and he actually was able to decompile the code for this radio. <laughs> and uh, he found something that he thought was kind of... Uh, kind of interesting. So together, you know, I helped him out after he changed a few things and recompiled it, sent me the code and confirmed that this worked, uh, basically this mod for all bands. Uh, along that same line, though, there's been a lot of people helping uh, DD1EX, uh, Onion, Onions, the, I'm sorry, not Onion, the Ryan is on there and Mr. Arm on there. A lot of people are helping on here. And, and this is very important for what I'm about to show you because it's not about the actual hack of oh my gosh, you can get CB radio on here. It's about the theory that that file, this X6100 file, is modifiable and we're in the back end of things so we could actually you know, change how or what runs. And let me just show you here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move X6100 to X6100 dot backup, okay? So that means we have a backup, okay? And we noticed that that process up here was process 254. So I'm going to kill that process. Watch what happens to the radio. Well, I should probably spell kill right, right? There we go. So you see the radio just, it didn't shut down, but the program closed. You can see a flashing cursor right here. That's because that program is everything for the user interface. Now, uh, what I could do is I could go ahead and I can move, or better yet, copy Toad's over to X6100, and I could hit enter. So what I just did is that file that Chuck has uh, modified and recompiled, I'm now loading it into the radio. When I reboot, it's going to think that that file, X6100 UI, is the original file, and it's just going to run it, although it's our Toad's modified file, okay? And what's so important about that? Well, let's go ahead and... Uh, Let's go ahead and, and shut this radio down right now. Yes, I know I could actually just type in reboot here, but there's a reason I'm not. And while this radio reboots here, I got to hold this down because it's flashing cursor. I just kind of want to make the point of the reason this is so important is because if we have the ability to modify this thing for all frequencies via the back end, uh, the potential is there when Zygu undoubtedly stops supporting the firmware after a few firmware updates, that the Toads community or other communities have the power and the ability to modify this radio and actually fix some of the problems with it and maybe make it great. So here we are. We have the radio back on, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to 7.34, and I'm going to transmit. And again, I'm in a dummy load. So here we are. We're transmitting, and the proof of concept is right there. Now, we can go all the way up and, you know, I can show you multiple bands. It'll just transmit on any band, anywhere, anytime. No big deal. 27, good to go. Whatever. Uh, it says it's transmitting on 60. Now, here's one of the things that we determined when it's plugged in to an antenna, anything above 55 megahertz is just playing 750 kilohertz AM radio station. That might be important, and that might actually signify that the theoretical limit of this radio is actually 55 megahertz, but if the frequency limiting is occurring within the, the processor or anything internally here, um, maybe it could be changed. And that's what we're going to find out, but there's still a lot of work, okay? So what is the other work? Well, the other work is, is we need to hook this up to a spectrum analyzer. First, I'll make sure that this is even clean transmitting, not just on these frequencies that should not be transmitted on, by the way, but also um, within the handbands. And hey, if this thing isn't good and clean on two meters or anywhere else, it, that doesn't mean that the project's killed because there's so many other things we could do, like work on the filtering. Uh, Josh at Ham Radio Crash Course says he didn't like the width of the SWR scan. Well, that's actually easily changeable too. Uh, certain things like that. So there's plenty of other things besides just modifying the frequencies and hooking it up to an analyzer. If we are able to eventually get it up to 2 meters and 70 centimeters, you're going to want to make sure that it's clean on the spurious emissions as well. And then there's going to be limitations unless the community starts coming together to code things. Uh, there'll be no tones or anything like that, but you'll still be able to do something like 144.200 to to make uh, you know contacts via sideband per se, or maybe even do CW. Again, at this point, this is all theoretical, and we're just testing limits of what the potential of this radio actually could be.
that's all a long ways away, but the Toads Discord, all the members in there that I've mentioned before and plenty of other members, we're working hard just to kind of play with this thing. And a lot of them don't have the radio, so we're all kind of working together. I don't know much about, I know enough about Linux to say, okay, I know how to access things. I know where the files should be. I know in theory that something could be done here, but I don't know how to modify or recompile you know, a program to, to, or compile and recompile a program to, uh, to make it work. And that's where the rest of the Toads community is coming in strong. So if you guys do have any kind of skills or knowledge, you might be able to instill upon us. It's a fun community. We're having a really good time building this, a uh, lot of more testing to go, but until next time I'm ham radio, dude, you might like this video up here. 73.